Congratulations, you have bought yourself a Thrustmaster 1600 Flight Pack variant, which may include joystick, sliding throttle quadrant, and rudder pedals with differential braking toe brakes. If you are wondering how to set up one or all of these components, you are in the right place. First, you will need to unbox your controls. The most common pack available is the throttle and joystick, but for those of you with pedals, I will show you how to install those as well. Place your controls where it makes most sense for you. Here is my setup as an example. Before doing anything else, turn on your computer and create a new desktop folder called Thrustmaster. This is where you will install the drivers. Then go to support.thrustmaster.com and select the Joysticks tab. All Thrustmaster joystick systems should show up, including the three different 1600 FCS variants. Because I have all three, I will open that one. But select the one that is appropriate for you. All manuals are available for download, but not required for setup. We will click on the Drivers menu and click on the Download tab to the right. Make sure you select the folder created on the desktop listed Thrustmaster, then click Save. Once you see Download completed, proceed to the folder and double click on the Install Wizard. When the wizard gives you the option, click Next. Then you can read the terms before hitting Next, or even print if you would like. Verify the install location is going to the folder, then hit Next, then finally Install. When install is complete, you can now plug your devices in. The joystick and throttle are standard USB plugins, while the rudder plugin resembles an Ethernet cord. If you have a J12 adapter, like this, I recommend using it. If you don't, there is a plug-in on the front left of the throttle quadrant shown by position 6 here. You can plug it in there. If you have a J12 adapter, plug the pedals in there. Then make sure to set it to airplane mode, not vehicle mode, before plugging it in. Once all are plugged in, click Finish. Then proceed back to the support page. Scroll down to Utilities, find the advanced calibration software for the pedals, and click Download. Make sure it gets put into the correct folder. When downloaded, go to the folder and open the application. If you see this indication, where rudder input is all the way to the top, try pushing the left rudder pedal followed by the right. If that does not center the input, verify that airplane mode is selected and not vehicle mode. Then try cycling the pedals again. That fixed the problem and centered the input. Now, use right full rudder followed by left full rudder to verify correct control inputs. Then use right toe brake followed by left toe brake. All appears normal for our rudder pedals and toe brakes. As you can see, the dead zone input is 10.2. That's a pretty good starting point for our rudder pedals. If you want to change the dead zone, scroll the line to the desired amount, then click apply. You will need to unplug and then replug the rudder pedals back in. I'll go ahead and change it back real quick. At this point, the controls are fully usable on your computer. Close the calibration software, then open your desired flight sim. I am going to be setting up my controls for DCS today, but open your applicable flight sim. When inside DCS, click Options, then click Controls. Then go to Axis Command scroll menu. Once in Axis Commands, we will attach our device inputs to the desired controls starting with the joystick. Double click on Pitch under the joystick column. Once here, pull Aft on the stick, then push Forward it should automatically detect the pitch axis. Now, double click on roll under the joystick column. Then, move the stick full left, then full right. It should automatically detect the roll axis. You can now verify all the control inputs by moving the stick around. For those not setting up rudder pedals, under joystick double click on rudder. We will now twist the joystick full left and full right. This will be your yaw axis for the aircraft. For those with rudder pedals, skip this step. Also, for those with no rudder pedals, under joystick, double click on wheel brake. Using the small tab slider on the joystick, move it all the way forward and all the way back. This will be how you can use brakes without rudder pedals. Those with rudder pedals, skip this step. Now, moving on to the throttle quadrant, under throttle, double click on thrust. Move your throttle all the way forward and all the way back. It will automatically detect the throttle inputs, then click OK. Lastly, under the rudder column, double click on rudder. Push in full right rudder, 
then full left rudder and click OK. Verify the control inputs are correct. Next, double click on left wheel brake and press down on the left wheel brake control. Click OK and verify correct input. Repeat the process with the right brake. The final step is to add an axis tune. Under joystick, click on pitch once, then click on axis tune at the bottom. Set curvature to 30. Think of curvature as decreased sensitivity. This will make the flight controls a little bit more realistic. Repeat under roll. Click axis tune curvature 30, making the roll axis more realistic. Under rudder, it's click axis tune, but this time 35 decreasing the sensitivity even more. We will also add a Denzode of 10. This will make it so you have to add a little bit of force before rudder input's even applied, making it realistic to actual rudder pedals. Congratulations, you have set up your Thrustmaster 1600 flight pack. Best of luck to you, and see you in the skies.